So uh, I think we have done, yeah. So let's do some exercise in this chapter. Right? So uh, maybe we finish these three questions. First, uh, I think my word, then uh, I, let's say uh, question, question two, uh, question two. Uh, So I give you five minutes to try uh. The letter and the crown. So let me. Right now, here is a fiction, and here is a norm ration. Okay, so there is here is also a norm ration. Also, you need to use a different. Uh, a different symbol. Uh, so the, uh, oh yeah, we don't need, okay, my bad. The child has the mass 2mg, okay? And then the weight of the uh, rod is mg. So this is a feedback diagram that you need to, uh, to, 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 to draw. Now three equations. Uh, two equations are, are the uh, equation of force, and one equation is the moment. So for the first two equations, it's not difficult to write, okay? So you, if you look at the horizontal forces, R U to F. If you look at the vertical forces, then N, N should be equal to 3 mg. And then if uh, you, you also need to take the moment. So that equation will lack for you. Uh. Like, um, I don't really know how to convert the tangent thing. Like how do you use the formula? So can I just find the angle? Why? <laughs> No la, you should know how to convert it uh. I don't know, I mean in the exam if I don't know, can I do that? Because you need the exact answer. <sighs> so first of all, uh, if you want to convert it to sine and cosine, like you first of all, uh, you draw a triangle, a right angle triangle. And then this is angle alpha. Yeah, you, I, I don't know how to use it. Feel four, okay? That means you can consider this side to be three and this side to be four. Yeah, and other side is five. Yeah, so that you know uh you know this side by using the Pythagoras theorem. Then you know that side alpha should be three over five. Yeah, 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 I know. Over five. But how do you use them? <laughs> what do you mean how do you use it? For the equation of moments, then you need to use the alpha. Now, uh, normally we will take the moment at point A because there are two forces passing through the point A. And then 
the two mg and mg are the moments of a uh, clockwise moment. So that means two mg times this distance. This is alpha, okay? Which should be two over three a times psi alpha plus mg times a psi alpha. Oh yeah, nothing. I know how to use it. That will be equal to uh, uh, r times 2a cosine alpha. Actually, you don't need to find the uh, sine alpha and cosine alpha in this question. And then you try to solve these three equations. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you try to see if we get the same answer to that. Any questions? Hello, hello. They said the example we wrote, like, why is it like sign alpha? Because, like, hmm? where can you point, point to that point? Uh, okay, well, what I mean is this uh, like, you have to find this, right? Because it's like per perpendicular, so we have to find the cosine. Cosine 90 degrees minus alpha. That means sine alpha. Oh, okay, okay. I, I found this angle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I found this angle. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that means it should be fine, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So any other questions? No questions. Yes questions. No questions. No. So if no questions. So we talk about screen of it and let's go to the next question. Uh, this one, this one. Uh, all about the ladder, okay? Ah, so easy. So uh give you some time to do it, okay? And then we'll and then we try to do uh a part of the mechanics too. Uh, some 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 past paper together.
So maybe let's have it up, okay? I'll do it together. <laughs> I'll do something slow. Let me throw in the thing. Wow, so slow. Uh. Five beta, okay? Later. One end on a rough ground, and another one is on a, a smooth roll, okay? And then the coefficient of the uh, coefficient of friction is zero point three. The top of the ladder touch the wall at the point four meter. He, right now, is, he is four meter. Okay, this one is three meter by Pythagoras theorem. Cannot rest in equilibrium in this position. So what you need to show that this is a really a tough question. Maybe. So first of all, you try to uh, label those forces. Now you can either say that the friction is not enough uh, for keeping this object in equilibrium. So how can you show it? So first of all, by considering the forces, it should be so easy, okay? N equal mg and R U F. And also if you take the moment at this point, so and then uh, let's say this angle is theta, right? this angle is theta. Then you uh mg will have a clockwise moment. That is mg uh 2.5 uh cosine theta. Then you go to r times uh r times four. Okay. Uh, actually you don't need to 2.5 cosine theta, you can have a look. It is just half of the three meter. It's just 1.5 meter. Then you try to solve it, okay? And then uh, uh, R equal to sum over say, 3 over 16 mg. That you to friction. And then the normal should you to mg. But then you know that uh, the friction, uh, uh, the maximum value of the function that should be 0 0.3 uh, mg a uh, 0 0.3 n that means 0 0.3 mg but this value okay but this one is more than 0 0.3 they are get, get any mistake here some should say some should say Do you notice any, any mistakes here? Hello, hello. Um, let me look at the marking screen. Hmm. So what chapter and what exercise is this? Chapter hmm. six. <laughs> chapter review six, okay. Basla? Oh, no, no, no. This is 3 over 2. Then this should be 3 over 8 here. That means, uh, and then uh, the fraction you calculated uh, to be equilibrium uh, is greater than 0 0.3 mg. Therefore, the object cannot be in equilibrium. Okay. I've sent it in the group chat. So if uh, no, any other questions? No, yes, no. Mm -hmm. So if no question, let's have a look at part B. Wait, so I can't uh, like, like when you're drawing like the diagram, mm -hmm. 
why can't like uh the three meters be on like on the vertical and the four meters be on the horizontal does that matter or does you can do either one no the question totally right there for me oh i didn't even see that <laughs> Then, no question unless I have a look at part B. So uh, right now to make the ladder to be at rest in equilibrium, there is a brick at the bottom. Assuming that the lowest point, but not touching the ground. Oh. What does it mean, not touching the ground? Maybe it's attached to the wall or something. I'm not sure. Oh, it, it looks like this one. You just consider a man is sitting at the bottom of the ladder, but the man does not touch the ground. Okay, that means that the ladder, it has a heavy object here. Okay, it's a wedge. So then, uh, that means that you need to consider that the mass of the brick to be maybe big empty, okay? So you add an extra force on the graph, on the uh, on the graph here, big mg, okay? Uh, such that uh, the object is uh, still remain in equilibrium. So uh, you need to just change the formulas a little bit for the vertical forces. You just need to add a big mg here. Uh, but for the equation of the, uh, but for the equation of the moment, it is still it is still the same, because if you take the moment at the lowest point, then uh, the big mg will pass through that point. It does not cause the moment. Okay, and then we try to solve this, and we we'll see. Uh, so and then you can show that. Uh, R is still equal to uh, 3 over 8 mg, small mg, okay? And then you can still see that the fraction is still equal to 3 over 8 mg, okay? Because F equal to R. So it does not depend on the mass of the brick, brick M. That's it. And what? Okay. Uh, I write down the the three new equations here, okay? Actually, you just need to change the first one, the vertical force equation. The horizontal force remains the same. The equation of moment remains the same. And then you solve the last equation, you can see that the big R is equal to 3 over 8 mg. And the second equation, you say that R to F, so you show that the fraction is 3 over 8 small mg. It does not depend on the mass of the brick. Okay. Then part C, find the minimum uh, mass of the brick for which the letter will be at rest, we rest in equilibrium. That means you need to look at the fraction value. Uh, you know that the fraction eh, is 3 over 8 mg that equal to 0 0.3 newton. Mm. Okay. Then you can solve it, okay? So complicated. Lah. Okay. Uh, does small mg equal to w given by the question? That should be the answer.
Any question here? No. So if no question and then, so let's do one past paper together. Make it live. Mm -hmm. Make it. So I'll take the screenshot and then, uh, no question. Then let's go on to, yeah, past paper. Yeah. Mm. Oh, let's do it together. So I answer how many time we need? One hour and thirty minutes. Okay, no need lah. One hour is enough lah. So have a look at the question one. What thing at the speed four J and receive an impulse one newton? Okay. So find the manager of oh, oh. symbol the symbol. The symbol. Yeah. So you know the impulse is a change in momentum. So that should be 0 0.5 times 2i plus 3j minus 0 0.5 times 4j, okay? Then you can get the answer. That should be j uh, minus 0 0.5, my i times minus 0 0.5j. Uh, it's better for you to write down the unit also. And then, no matter, okay, it is mass times the unit of uh, I'm not sure if the marketing scheme will require you to write down the uh, unit. So for the next question, then you find the angle between I and J. Uh, you can do it in many different ways. You can, let's say if you can uh, draw the graph, okay, draw the graph. Uh, this Y axis and this is X axis. So I, so it is, uh, one i minus zero point five j, so this should be somewhere to, uh, here, okay. And then you are finding the angle between i and j. J is pointing upwards. That means you are finding this angle, okay. Then how can you find this angle? Just find the angle between the x-axis and impulse i, and then add ninety degrees to it. Yes, then that, that will be an easy method, okay? Let's say you, you want to find the angle phi. So phi, angle phi should be 0 0.5 divided by 1. Sorry, tangent phi should be 0 0.5 divided by 1. And then you, uh, then you can find the angle phi. That should be uh, 26.6 degree. So the angle between I and J should be this one plus 90 degree. Okay, that's your answer. This is one way to do it. Another way to do it eh, is make use of the dot product. Did we, have we learned about the dot product? No? Yes? No, recall. No? no? Okay, then skip it. So we can take a screenshot and then let's go on. Okay. Wow. They give you two pages to write down the answer, a waste of paper. So have a look at the next one. A truck of 90, 900 kilogram. In kind straight road, okay? Some angle here. So let's say this angle theta. Then give, given you that sine theta is one nine. And then moving at speed, 15 meter per second. Okay. The resistance to motion of the truck has a constant magnitude. So this has constant magnitude, 200 Newton, 50, 50 Newton. Find the weight, weight at which the engine of the truck is working. So that means uh, the, okay. the weight where the engine, I think it's, it means the power. So uh, you know the formula for power, it can be either energy over time 
or the force times velocity. And right now you need to find the force provided by the engine. Now it, it is not only 200 plus 50. There is also a weight component, downwards the slope. That will be equal to uh, the total total mass is 1050, okay, times G. Uh, we take 9.8, okay, and then times psi theta, then times the velocity. Then you can get the answer. That's it. So, and then let's have a look at part B. Find the acceleration of the truck at the instant after the two bar breaks. So then you can draw the free wall diagram. This is 200 Newton. The force remain the same. This one. Oh, but we haven't find, I, I didn't find this force. The force is. Wait, no, sir. It's not going to be one, uh, one. Oh, wait, no, my bad. So the force remains the same. And then you should know that there is also a weight component that is done down the slope. Uh, that should be uh, 900 times 9.8 times psi theta. Okay. And then uh, part B asks you to find an assertion. That means you need to find the net, uh, you need to net find the net force. Then net, net force equal to MA. M is 900, the A. So that's the answer for part B. Wait, what is 4180 divided by 3? 4180 divided by 3 is the FR, the highlighted one. Now. Yeah. Um, is it? Yeah. 41x0 divided by is the uh the the force provided by the engine. Mm. Okay. Mm. Wait, wait. And what about the 50M? Do you just leave it? 50 Newton is I think on the Taylor. Taylor. It does not add on the truck. Oh, sorry. 
yeah, if you want to find an ascension of the truck, you, know, you only need to uh, have a look at the forces acting on the truck. Okay. So, and then uh, if any other questions, no? And then let's go on to part C. So you want to use the work energy principle to find how much further up the road the trailer travel before coming to in the thing is at west. Uh, so if if you consider the energy initially, the trailer has the speed fifteen meter per second. Uh, it will go up. So that means. Uh, it will loss in KE, loss in kinetic energy, and then gain in uh, gravitation potential energy. And also, don't forget there is a friction here. So there is also written against friction. Okay, then we write down the equation uh, like this. So, and then the mass of the trailer is 150. Then it lost all of its KE. So for the gain in GPE, M, G, H, uh, we don't know the displacement yet. So let's let it to be S, okay? Uh, for GPE, M, G, H, H uh, is an increase in the height. So this is the length S, this is theta. So it should be S psi theta. Plus the return against function. For the return against function, it's just uh, the function times the displacement. Okay. I think you can find that the answer should be around 79.1 meter. Yeah. So if no other questions, we can take a screenshot and then let's go on. Huh? Three, two, one. Okay. But they give you four pages to write it. So have a look at question three. This is always about the center mass. Actually, you don't need to look at the sand, uh, uh, you don't need to look at this passage. It just means that it is flow, the re rectangle is flow like this one. Then show that uh, the center mass of L is 16 over 9A from EF. EF. Okay. Now, and then first of all, you need, it's better for you to let the coordinate system. So I think, I think it, it, it may be quite natural to let the coordinate system, uh, this one to be X axis, okay? And this one to be the uh, Y axis. I'm not sure how you uh, cut the, uh, uh, the, the how do you cut the object into different parts? So I will cut it like uh, two squares and double two triangle. Okay. For the lamina. Okay. Mm -hmm. So and then let's write down all the uh, set, uh, coordinates of the centers. So let's say for the this part, uh, I think it's easy. Okay, it's AA maha. Then here, it should be uh, 3A and 3A, right? Mm -hmm. And then, do you still remember how to find the uh, center mass of triangle? 
Oh, mid point. You add all the coordinates up and divide it by. Oh three. no no no. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, so uh, it's better for you to write down the coordinate of F, C, and G. So for F, it it should be uh C O and two A. G is two A two A. C is uh four A. Oh, sorry, two A and four A. And then you add this coordinate together, and then divide by three. So it has four over three A here, and then. Yeah. Is it? It's over three. Yeah. But that's fine. If you can't find this answer, that means we get something, some mistake here. So, and then uh, actually, then we can uh, directly find the center mass of L. Yeah. So, and then, uh, so let's say the center mass, we write it in the column form, easy for us. So, you still remember, you need to use the area times, uh, times the center of mass. Yeah, center mass. Let's write down the uh the two uh square first and then divide by total area and then the area of the triangle is uh a times sorry two a times two a divided by a but divided by two so it has the area that is uh two a square wait that isn't the square like on the squares should yeah, four A square, four A. Yeah, just trap you, okay? Or if you want to get trapped, yeah, except everyone. So the area of a triangle is two A square, but there's two. Yes, I was going to say that. So. Ah, yeah, you're so smart, okay? Keep just getting now. Oh, you are so smart. Okay. So this is the formula to write down the center mass. And actually, lah, uh, for doing the mathematic question, eh? First of all, you need to see how whether you can simplify this equation more. Actually, everywhere is four a square. Okay, cancel it out. Wait, sir, uh, isn't like for uh, two a square? We didn't write this a square. Okay, yeah, then it's fine. Oh, yeah. Okay, you can cancel out four a square everywhere. So for the numerator, you just add them up together. Four a. Then that, and then you divide by three. Oh, so nice, you get the answer. Lah. Actually, let me find something more. It's about the center mass of the y coordinate. Because actually, let, because you need you need that uh you need need this value in part B. So it's better for us to find it. Also in part A. So what does this angle, uh, this length mean? It's a length from E F. Actually, that means this is the, uh, this is the, uh, x coordinate of the center mass. Okay. That's the distance. From here, okay. That means this is the x coordinate. So we get the answer in part A. Okay, five marks. Easy to get it. If no question, and then let's have a look at part B. So it is really suspended from point C. Wait, sir, where did the three come from in the denominator? Um, yeah, it's one plus one plus one. You divide, you divide four a squared. Uh, you don't get nothing in the numer uh, in the denominator. Uh. Yeah. So where'd you get the three? Hmm? Yeah. Oh, did you just when use it? When you divide by four a square, then it just becomes one. Yeah, one plus one plus one. Oh. So oh. have part B. So if we find a point from point C and hang in, in equilibrium, find the size of the angle CF and the vertical, uh, downward vertical. 
嗱 ，you know if it is hand from at point C 咧，頂咧，誒 shit， 我 stop share， <笑> sir， 啊、oh, ，the annotation is all gone， 啊 ，but still fine， we still remember the answer， I think， 唉 ，so 咧 ，and then 咧，誒 ，can you see my screen？ Yeah， okay， okay， this is the same number， okay， if your hand is point C 咧 ，and then The dotted line is the vertical line. Okay, the dotted line is the vertical line. And right now, you need to find the uh the angle of the C between the CF and the vertical line. So that means you need to find this angle theta. So how can we solve it? Eh? It's better for us uh, to see if we can uh can draw some wide angle triangle to find this angle. Lah. If you consider maybe let's say this end triangle, ah,、uh, obviously this, it, this is not a right angle triangle. So you can make use of the trigonometry to find the angle. So the, so which right angle triangle will you choose to find the angle theta? Right, for me, I will find the angle between. Like the line CG and the angle N two forty five minus that angle. Do you get it? La la, everyone so smart. So actually, that we write, I will draw the right angle triangle here. We use make use of this right angle triangle to find this angle first, and then at forty five degree that minus that angle is equal to theta. So do you still remember the coordinate of the center mass? And twenty is it? Is it twenty? Yeah, twenty. Yeah. So and then ah,、uh, draw it again here. So for this length, it should be ah two a minus sixteen over nine a. Then for this height, it should be ah four a minus twenty over nine a. And you find these two lengths first. Solve. Okay. And then let's say this angle is five. Okay. Then tangent five should be this one divided by this one. So we can get one over eight here, and then use your calculator. Well, theta should be forty-five degree minus this one. Any other questions? No questions. No question. So if no questions, and then、uh, you can take a screenshot, and then let's go on to this one. Wow, over. How many questions left? Uh, uh there's always there's always ten questions, right? Seven questions. So nice. Oh, because it's only seven chapters. Oh,、uh, it doesn't matter about the chapter. You just like follow.、Oh. Yeah. Okay. Let's have a look. This one. This one is much more easy. So. So the rust is like this one, and then it leaves the origin at time u zero. That means that at t u zero, the distribution should also be zero. Okay.
for part A, in synthetic arrest, that means V to zero. And then you try to solve this, uh, uh, you try to solve this, uh, 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 you need to, uh, 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 factorize it, okay, to show your steps. Okay, so that means you get the time t to three, and then t u to seven over three. Such that t one should be seven three, and t two should be three. Okay, if I have mm. Mm -hmm. easy marks, and then find the magnitude of the oscillation p at the instant t u t one. So, uh, if you want to find the oscillation, that means you need to differentiate the velocity once. Then I think it's not difficult. Uh -huh. Then you substitute the value when t u t one. That means you substitute uh seven over three. Well, it's so easy to get the three marks. Don't say that we won't able to do this in Excel. <laughs> oh, it's negative two. Okay, you may say that the magnitude is two. Okay. Because the negative sign means the direction of the assertion. And then for part C, uh, find the distance traveled by P in the interval this one. So, Or part D, uh, uh, really, mm, okay, part D, okay, part D is a little difficult. But if, uh, if you have a look at part D, uh, actually, uh, you can make some trick in part C. Uh, but it is, uh, it's okay. Uh, for a distance travel, uh, what does it mean? Uh, you need to integrate. Ah. You need to integrate the velocity with respect to time t. If you do it like this, and then you lost some mark. If you still remember, the velocity can be negative or positive. But the uh let's say the object is returning, okay. The object changes the direction of motion. If you using you if you integrate the velocity, what you get is the displacement, the distance here. If you want to find the distance travel, the length of this one plus this one, what you need to do uh, you need to use uh find the speed. You need to integrate the speed with respect to time t. So what you need to do is take the absolute value. And actually they have divide the motion in two parts. Actually, it doesn't matter here. <laughs> now, because you can see uh, the velocity is zero at this T1 and T2, that means that the, the velocity will not change the sign in between these two time values. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so we can make three different differential yeah. equations and then add them up. So actually, you don't need to take the absolute value in this example. So what you just need to do, uh, you integrate this one. And then let you okay substitute it okay I don't uh, I don't I don't waste time on this one okay so if no question then let's go on part D but show that it does not return to point O so how can we show that uh, so you just try to see that the this pace one is always positive for any time. 
And that means the object will, know, uh, will not return to point O or will not return to origin. So how can we get the displacement? We integrate the velocity once. Actually, we have integrated, we have integrated already. That is t cubed minus 8t squared plus 21t. Now, actually, uh, you need to put a plus c here for the integrating constant, the opposite constant after doing the integration. But uh, if you substitute t to c, uh, they give you the initial condition that this space should be zero, such that the c should also be c, and that's fine. So how can you show that the S is always positive? Eh? But first of all, you take out the fat, common factor T. And then the, how can you show this one is always positive? Except T we see. Hello. T will never be negative. Uh, maybe many of you may forget. La. What you should do, uh, uh, you can either say that the discriminant is greater than zero, this part. <sighs> that means it will, not, it will never be zero. Mm. If no wood, okay, no we would, that means it will not touch the x axis. No wood. Or another way to do it uh, is computing square. Otherwise, to compute the square. Wait, but the discriminant is smaller than zero. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, so you need to show that the discriminant is smaller than zero. Yeah. So another, another better way to do it is uh, computing square. I mean, it's not too difficult to see this one. So it's always positive if the t is greater than zero. But of course, when T is zero, this you will see. Okay. That means it will not return to origin. Oh, okay. But why I say complete square is a better method? Because even you have shown that the discriminant is, uh, even you have shown that the discriminant is smaller than zero, you hmm. don't know whether the whole term is negative or positive. Okay, you haven't shown it, okay. Oh, but it's still fine, it's still fine, actually. So let's take the screenshot, okay. No question? I love this kind of question, actually, because I don't need to draw the graph, so uh, it does not take a lot of time to do it. You're weird. <laughs> so then let's go on to the next Maybe uh, today, uh, you take some time to do question five, six, and seven. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I'll send you this paper, and then uh, you do the question five, six, and seven, and send me the answer, okay? And then from next lesson, then we try to do some revision uh, on FP1, uh, M1, and M2, okay? And then uh, from starting from September, uh, we're going to going on uh, to maybe FP2, then what do you want first? M3 or FP2? Mechanics 3 or M FP2? Mm. Uh, F FP. FP2. Okay, then let's go on to FP2 after we have doing the revision in August. So then see you on next Tuesday. Okay? Yeah. Okay. okay. Next Tuesday is 19. Oh yeah, 18. Okay, still fine. Hey, your birthday. Okay. Then see you on next Tuesday. Bye bye. See you on next Tuesday. Sir. Hmm? <laughs> Bye-bye. Okay. Mm -hmm.